There we go. Okay, we're good. So, yeah, what was the next question? Uh, height. What is your height? Height? I'm, yeah. like, really small. I'm pretty sure all of us on Astro Authority, we're, like, the shortest team ever. Just lie. I'm like, I'm, like, five. All right. Yeah. Seven, eight. Seven, eight is really good. Yeah, go. That's a really good esports <laughs> height. You can yeah. get a lot of games won that way. Yeah, pretty casual height. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what what else I got? Uh, fighting style. Oh no, home city, home city. Home city. Uh, here in Indiana, mm -hmm. though I'm like less than an hour away from Chicago, so okay. You know, you gotta go there sometimes. You're like a rural rural city suburb yeah. kind of. Yeah, basically. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And finally, your fighting style. Fighting style. Yeah. Well, that depends. Like IRLs or in game. I mean, these answers are open to interpretation. Oof. It's really whatever you want. All right. Let's see. Fighting style. Uh, <laughs> running away. Running away. Good one. Easy. That's a survivor's <laughs> tactic. I that's, like that. That's survival. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. Well, I'm glad we got to know you, and uh, the people watching got to hear hear those answers. So you picked a couple uh, drafts for us tonight, and like I said before, the uh, point of Nexus Draft House is to take a little extra time to really go over a draft, to help people understand what's going on on the draft screen, what they should be doing, what they should be thinking about, and also for people watching, uh, watching uh, HOTS at home, like uh, pro-level HOTS, uh, to kind of understand the drafts they're watching beyond the amazing caster analysis, of course. So... I believe the first game you picked for us uh, was uh, who was it? Let me load it up. That's that MVP Black. No, oh, that's right. Yes, yeah. MVP Black. With the insane medic. Yes, MVP. Oh, wrong one. Hold on. I got. I loaded the wrong game. Be right back. All right. Give me a second. I'm navigating Windows and it's hard. MVP versus X team. There we go. There they are. Okay. So unfortunately on the VOD, uh, they got to the draft a little late, so it missed a few of the picks. But let's just start at the beginning and pretend those picks aren't quite there yet. Um, Battlefield of Eternity. What sort of things are you prioritizing on this map? What sort of things are you thinking about? So on this map, Grimmin is always like a really good pickup. Like even if he, not even on this map. Like, Grimmian's an insane pickup, but on this map, he's, like, on a completely different level because he could burn the Immortal, like, so much faster. Tyrande's a really good pickup. Uh, and then after that, it's, like, Li Ming, okay. which I'm surprised went through this whole draft. What sort of uh, what sort of things on Battlefield of Eternity in general do you want to... What, 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 what are the hero's strengths on this map? What, what are weaknesses on this map? Like, what do you want to emphasize? So... The strengths on this map would probably be like either a burning comp for the immortal or just a full team wipe comp. Okay. Like basically a comp that just like goes in, either stays alive or just explodes someone. Mm -hmm. And it could be done either way. And then like the worst thing probably on this map is like it's wave clear. It's like it doesn't it doesn't really help you as often as it should. Right. So it's not as big of a deal on Tomb of the, as on type Tomb of the Spider Queen something yeah, like that. Yeah, Tomb. Okay. Tomb's very important for it. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I, you know, a lot of uh you know, it's really easy to think about just the objectives, but it doesn't it's sometimes you don't think about like Ryan and I are average players and uh so I think we have a good a good outlook on what sort of things maybe average players might miss or not know when drafting. So that that's good. Uh, all right, so the first thing that happened in this draft was, uh, looks like X team banned Thrall. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Uh, w I, what what do you think that was about? I I can understand that. So Rich is to be known like one of the best Thrall players. So it's really no big surprise that they ban it. Okay, so that was Thrall's a, a really target good. target ban. Yeah, I think it's kind of target ban, but at the same time, Thrall Thrall's pretty good on Battlefield. So yeah, I mean he's got the great poke. Pretty good ban. Mm -hmm. Not okay. bad. So, uh, obviously, the ban over on MVP was Illidan, uh, because yeah. uh, they weren't getting first pick, so anything to say about Illidan? Well, it's just... <laughs> Illidan's good basically on every map, Yeah. and he's, he's a MVP monster. just... They prioritize it, both banning as well as picking it, so... Right. Okay. They love it. So that's a pretty simple ban, I think everybody... I think everybody understands that ban. Uh, so, like you said earlier, with the gray main, uh, they do uh, X team does take the first pick gray main. And is this the only map you'd probably see that on? Uh, 
with first pick Greymane, he's slightly coming more and more into meta. Mm -hmm. uh, after once he got nerfed, which wasn't even that bad of a nerf. No. no. So he he just fell off for really no reason at all. It's just they didn't really buff him, but they also didn't. Right. Nerf him is hard. Well, there's this there's this mindset right where like if if anything gets nerfed, it's immediately got to be not as good, right? Yeah. Like, right. Like it yeah. kind of makes sense. It was definitely like a sky is falling thing after Greymane was banned. Definitely. And Ryan here can attest. I'm a Greymane <laughs> fan, and the whole time everyone was talking, oh, he sucks. He can't poke anymore. And I was like, no, he's just great. He's still fantastic, and I'm just pointing that out because I like being right. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so there's your Greymane. Uh, yeah. And you know, if, I actually wanted to go back to this. Um, I did not. I had never heard of Astral Authority. Um, I was actually in Austin for DreamHack. Uh, that was the first time I ever saw you guys. I was in the crowd, and uh, I love your guys' team. Uh, like as soon as you got, I mean, you guys performed really well that day, and like, I was very impressed by you guys. Uh, you're a cool like American team. That's always fun, you know. Like we like seeing Americans do well. Uh, yeah. So how long have you guys been playing together? Thank you, thank you. Uh, we've been playing together for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, we recently had only one person uh, with a roster change, but other than that, we've been playing like since like November, and then our roster change happened in like late February, early March, something like that, somewhere around there. But after that, it's like we've been playing for a pretty long time. Right. Okay. Did you guys come up um, out of chair league? Uh, where Where did you um, guys come from? Like, how did you form your team? How did we form the team? Yeah. It like, was late November. I'm trying to remember it. It was basically like a bunch of divergent gaming tournaments, and then other small tournaments on ESL at the time. <laughs> That's really it. Gotcha. And just so every, anyone watching uh, in the chat is uh, wants wants to know, you can uh, feel free to ask questions. We'll be happy to answer them. All right. So the next thing that happened in this draft on Battlefield of Eternity after the Gray Main first pick was uh, MVP picks up Murd and Falstad. Yeah. And uh, a Murd, I think do. a Murd is another one of those picks that's like doesn't need a lot of explanation, but uh, he it is a very mm -hmm. early pick. Yeah, it's Murden. pretty early. Yeah. So what do you think uh, was the motivation behind that? it? That that one's kind of hard to judge, but I understand the Murden pickup, but it is a little bit early. I guess they're just also denying them the Murden because they're kind of saying, like, we can stun ETC because, like, ETC is, like, the only other tank, really, mm -hmm. at this point. But they're, they're saying, like, if you engage, we have Falstad for it. And now we also have Murden for the denial. Also, Murden's pretty good against Greymane since, like, he denies him that attack speed. So Murden could just be really annoying on uh, defending the Immortal while the rest of the team's, like, attacking the other Immortal. Right. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, you typically don't see him picked up that early. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what went down next here? Well, just to stay on that Falstad pick there. Oh, right. We didn't even talk about Falstad. Yeah. See, are that's they... why I hired you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> are, are they doing the global mobility here, or are they just trying to pick up some backline damage oh. to maybe you know, burn down that immortal here? The global mobility is not that useful here in this map because there's only two lanes. It, it helps a lot with Falstad because... Uh, it let's say that the Immortals like top. You could say, all right, Falstad, go soak bot, and then if they try to engage, you can fly up there, and then we have a five v five while we're getting soak at the same time. So Falstad's like a really good safe pick. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, it's a not bad pickup. It it also denies uh, the gray main engage in case if they want to full engage. Falstad could just gust them away and say, no, we don't really want to fight right now. Right. Right. Speaking of the, of the dust, do you just see kind of the dust, you know, kind of always being there now? With I mean, it's been in the meta for so long. Are we ever going to see, you know, Hillern's Blast come back, or are they going to need to tweak it to make it more worthwhile? I don't see anyone uh, really playing around dust. Yeah, I mean, it's probably. so good. Yeah, it's age. probably still one of the best alts in the game. 
Yeah. So uh, for your Wonderland, no. <laughs> for your money, what what's the better alt overall, Sunder or Gust? What do you mean, Sunder? Sunder or Sunder? Gust? Sunder, Sunder or Gust? Or Gust? Yeah. Uh, Gust still. Gust, still is, Gust. Always, Gust uh, is the best. Gust ever. is the best. All right. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> All right. So you're sitting here. You're banning. You're on the red team. You're not necessarily in a pro match. But you see this draft, um, and you have the Grey Main and the Illidan Thrall banned out. What sort of things are you... at? Th I think this is where drafts get difficult, right? You've seen a couple picks, yeah, and you're trying to build your comp and also kind of work around theirs. What sort of things are you are you looking at here? Yeah, definitely. Because they picked up Murden Felstad, that leaves a lot on the table. Right. So you can look for whatever comp you really want to go with, but... The like hundred percent pick here is like, oh my god, they gave us Rhaegar. They gave us like sure. the best healer in the game currently, and also with Greymane, so they right. have to pick up Rhaegar. Rhaegar, sure. And then after that, really just depends on what you want. Uh, they could try to ban out ETC. Well, MVP might try to ban out ETC because it's like the only other tank really. So they could have went for ETC, but okay. if not, you could really define your comp with the next pick really okay so the thing about Rhaegar and I think this is a little misunderstood the reason he's head and shoulders the best healer in the game isn't necessarily because of his healing right uh like, yeah it's yeah. basically just because he heals everyone oh, so it is okay see yeah. I was under the impression it was his added damage that made him such a such a priority it's it's everything. Right, it's right. everything. It's, got it all. it's his added damage. It's his slow. It's that's that ninety percent slow at sixteen. Yeah. The it's his totem. ultimate, which is insane. Yeah. It's everything on him right now. That's why he's the best. Yeah. It seems like they've had a, a, a some trouble getting him in the right place. Uh, he he's been at the top for a long time. They over nerfed him for a while. They rebuffed him. He just seems to be a tricky hero to get to get right. At, at, yeah. Yeah. All right. Ryan, you got anything you want to? Oh, I mean, so after after radar, it seems like most of the other healers are pretty, you know, either map or comp specific. But radar seems to find a place in every comp. You know, if you had to choose one who was right after radar, that wasn't, you know, as map specific, or, or would be the next best just in general. You know, you know, who would you pick right now? Is Basically, that, the like, next best. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next best healer. Well. Uh, it is either without map specific it's it can still be brightwing hmm. it can be brightwing and then we're starting to see monk a lot more so monk's right. making his way back and what is driving that what's driving the the monk come back what's driving the monk uh currently there's a lot of like burst in the meta you could say so with greymane if greymane goes all in then it will basically if he goes all in in melee form, he has to stay in. Otherwise, you're not gonna do that much damage, and after a while, it'll start showing that you're not doing anything. So, the reason for Monk is just like his palm right now. If you hit that, that can be a game-changing ult. Right. Yeah. It's a lot like Ancestral. Obviously, it's not quite as good as Ancestral, but it's a very similar spell. So, so what drives that over like an Uther burst healing? And uh, over G. Uther, right now Uther is still good. I, I'd put him at like third best after that, but it's just with Divine Shield, like in Hero League, it's really hard to say. Okay, you could go in now. I have alt. Go do your thing. I can alt perfectly. It, it's a little. It's a little bit harder in Hero League and in uh right. And tournaments and stuff like that it's it's easier but at the same time it's just mm, maybe it's not that good also uther doesn't have that much mobility and his heals are good but against the uh, aoe they're really bad so uther right. starts slightly right. going down so yeah like at your level of play it's kind of hard to count on players enemies making a bunch of mistakes right like you're yeah. all really good at the game so you know you, you, the draft is very important, obviously, and you ha and uh, being the, the reliable kind of healing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So who did they pick up? Let's see if they get that Rhaegar. They do get the Rhaegar, and then the very interesting Arthas pickup. What do you think of the Arthas there? Yeah, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> I can't even tell you why they would pick Arthas. Arthas yeah. is top 
five tank. It's just He's... some some Taiwanese <laughs> meta thing we don't know yet. I, <laughs> I don't actually know about the art. This yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's better now that he's been reworked, for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, there's... I think everyone who saw that was like, well, there's a lot of better choices left on the... Like, right? There's still ETC, ETC. out there. Yeah, yep. I and mean, he's just great. So mobile. Um, what does Arthas provide that the other tanks do not? Whether or not outside of him being better than them in general? What does, what does he bring? Because that okay. might be the answer to why they drafted him. Uh, Arthas... Over the other tanks, so easily Murd and ETC better. But mm -hmm. after that, I guess Arthas is the only other one that has a root slash stun, right? basically. And then with that, with his new recent buffs, he's actually pretty tanky. Yes. So he's got that going for him as well. Yeah, I he, think he's top three tank. Yeah, he has like, a significant amount of, of cool. CC. He just doesn't have a stun, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. the the root's good the root's good yeah. uh, but specifically on this map Battlefield of Eternity I don't mm -hmm. remember I think he goes Sindragosa right. but Sindragosa for this map if you get the Immortal and burn the Immortal uh, and if you have Sindragosa it's really good it's okay, just yeah. about as, it's just about as good as Sylvanas really really buffs your Immortal because yeah. he shuts down all the buildings ah, that could have been the reasoning yeah for sure yeah but but I mean at the same time if you want something like Sylvanas... Right, Sylvanas yeah, you is can still pick there. Sylvanas. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. She's great. Uh, on these maps with big uh, big monsters that attack the base, Sylvanas is always going to be great. Um, yeah, anything before we move on there, Ryan? No, let's, let's move right. on. So, we're into the ban phase now, and uh, MVP Black bans out Abathur. What yeah. is whoa? What is uh, why uh, would you? Uh, okay, I'm in Hero League. Every time someone bans Abathur, I get mad. Unless it's Towers of Doom. <laughs> so yeah. why, why do they ban Abathur here? So Abathur's slightly coming back in the meta. I know that we played it uh, last LAN in Summer Regional. Mm -hmm. uh, we played it with Greymane, and double clone Greymane just burst someone instantly. Sure. Uh, especially on this map, the mines on this map are really uh, annoying. Yeah. Just for that. And... Yeah, it goes back once again to the double gray main, which right. can just destroy anything. If burn if, that immortal, yeah. yeah. If if they want, they can burn immortal. If not, they can all in engage and fight. Like it's, okay. it's a, probably it's a good good probably bring, bring some some split push to. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, you know, it helps out the immortal, with the right? Yeah. yeah, it helps out with the so because uh, let's say if you're on left side and then the immortal, your immortal, spawns on the left side. You can defend it while Abathor just soaks and soaks and soaks, and then after a while, you'll be a level down. You'll say, wait, what happened? Right. Right. Yeah, see, I had not thought of, of the, uh, not only the mines, but the uh, double gray main. That's not something I had even considered, so. Oh, it's really good. All right, so who's ex your ex-team's captain, who are you banning here? Who do I ban here? Mm -hmm. It'd be really tough. Yeah, just they, they don't because they, they haven't revealed anything. Open. Yeah. Uh, after all this, I would probably ban KT. Okay. KT is an insane pickup for him. Sure. As well as KT is like that, the mage that says, "No, you can't really jump on me that quick because I have gravel apps and I'm just gonna walk away and burst you down half health." Right, and, the, and yeah, just so much damage comes out of him. Here, here's a parting gift bomb. Yeah. Spread yeah. it. Share with yeah, your friends. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> All right, so they do, they do actually ban out the Uther, though. Um, now, uh, MVP Black doesn't have a healer, uh, and they an X-Team does have Rhaegar, so it kind of makes sense to kind of knock them down the healer tier list, right? Mm, slightly. With Uther, I think you need something that, like, goes all in, like Illidan, Greymane. Sure. Anything like that. With Uther on Falstad or Murden, it's not that good. So you're thinking you're thinking MVP Black probably wasn't even thinking about Uther. They probably were not at yeah, all. Okay. Alright. Interesting. Alright, so let's see who uh, MVP Black does pick up here. Uh, they go for the Tyrael Kael'thas, so there's that Kael'thas pick that you said would be huge. Uh, which I mean Already, these like if they just played with these four heroes, I'd be like, that's a really good comp. Like, <laughs> they don't even have five yeah, heroes, yeah. and that's scary, you know. I yeah, mean, Tyrael, cool. Tyrael, not a tanky tank 
you know top tier tank. But what do you think? Uh, what do you think the Tyrael's about there? So with Tyrael, like I think at this point, Tyrael's just saying I'll stand on the back line mm -hmm. and hope that these two insane bursty mages can destroy whoever jumps in. Because as soon as Greymane jumps in, he's fully committed. So if you have Sanctification right on top of those two, those right. two can just insta-burst Greymane down yeah. without without worrying that you, they're uh, going to die. Yeah, I, I, I play Greymane, and if I was Greymane in this situation looking at that comp, I would be terrified. I'd be like, there's literally nothing I could do here. Like, I'm already yeah. dead, you know? Yeah. You can't do anything but stand in human form. Right, just shoot. Yeah. That's really it. Yeah. That's so partially nice. because you're you're not a pro, Danny. Well, uh, pretty sure well, I am. If you, if you were staring down MVP Blast, I think you're... No, no, I'm just, nothing I'm, I can do anyway. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying the comp. If I was staring oh, down okay. MVP Black, I'd be, like, making hand gestures at them, like gang signs. I'd be like, yeah, I have no problem. <laughs> you guys are done, son. Like, Wow. Well, yeah. At least my five level okay. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, I may be rank like twelve or whatever in Hero League, but I I know how to beat you. Uh. <laughs> Secret NA mid level strat. That's right. You okay. gotta be so bad they don't know what to do. All right, so X team uh, is gonna pick up their last two picks here, and they do go for the ETC second tank and the Taronda. Uh, Taronda, someone on this map that's very frequently picked. It's very surprising she made it all the way down here actually without being interacted with because she's picked yeah. very frequently here. Yeah. I'm actually a little bit surprised that MVP didn't grab it because they already have the Murden, which mm -hmm. is a really good combo, Mirande. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, X team picks up Toronto ETC, which is all another good combo. Uh, I'm surprised that they let ETC go all the way through, and I'm also a little bit surprised that they picked ETC, even though they have Arthas. I have Arthas, right. Yes. So, at this point, they're saying they have two backlines and two tanks yeah the, their last pick has to be a healer unless mvp black is insane which right. i guess they are but <laughs> yeah. if anybody uh, could do it yeah yeah so they're, they're saying we basically just dive the back line as if sanctification doesn't work if uh Tyrell gets stunned if he gets rooted if he's out of position slightly and he's not on top of those two back lines we can we can burst them i right. it's, it's it's not that bad they have, so they're at this point they're Fully committed right. for to a me, dive backline comp. To me, it looks like X Team is kind of drafting in a way that's it's like challenging MVP's ability to do damage, right? Like they're saying, "Here's our two tanks. Like we defy you to do enough damage to break through it and get to our backline." Which I mean, I don't know if that's what how they were thinking, but that's definitely what the draft looks like to me. So, how do you round out this team for MVP Black? Obviously, a healer. Um, for MVP Black, it has to be a healer. It's mm -hmm. just. At this point, you can pick any healer, and it's still going to get kind of beat. But mm -hmm. uh, if anything, I think I'm thinking like both Monk and no, just basically just Monk. Monk is Cause, the answer. Yeah, because yeah. with Monk, it's like he does have the uh, Relentless on 13, so that can help with the uh, ETC route, Tyrande, and Arthas. So. What kind of what kind of situations do you want to pick Brightwing in? What kind of situations do you want to pick Brightwing in? Uh, basically, first off, if you're like healer blocked, then you might as well just pick Brightwing. But mm -hmm. also with Brightwing, it's a it's a good hero to just have if you want to out sustain your opponent. Okay. And after like a while, something like an Illidan, something like a Tracer, then you say, okay, I'm gonna. Uh, Z on top of you, you're gonna get a massive shield. Mm -hmm. You can go in there without a little bit a little bit of a worry. Burn burn them down. Come back to me once you're about half health. We'll out sustain. We'll be good. And then if they try to engage with half health, we have full health at this point. We're fine. Right. So it's, you would say Brightwing is maybe a good pick against comps that really emphasize a lot of poke. Yeah, with a lot of poke as well as some engage, like some sneaky engage is what I'm saying. Like, sure. Uh, like Tracer. Tracer can zip on in the back line, do she's some in, really out. good damage, and then she's out. If she gets hit, she has a massive shield with Brightwing, and then she just walks away. You out sustain, you heal back up with Brightwing, and you're fine. So, uh, another Zeratul. good example. Yeah, Zeratel, exactly. Yeah. Zeratel is just like that. He goes in the back line, he 
hits hits him really hard. He disengages. If they are very low, then Zertel pops back in. VPs wait it out slightly, and there you go. You got a really good setup. Okay. Yeah. See, I I I've, I haven't played a lot of Brightwing, so I, and I I had a decent idea of where she fits, but it's good to hear hear it uh, put put into words that way. So thanks. Uh, last pick for MVP Black is going to end up being someone we forgot about and didn't talk about because nobody talks about her, Lieutenant Morales. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a really weird pickup, to say the least. So so let's go into this. Uh, why is it weird? Why do you think they were like, no, nah, it's not that weird. Here you go. Uh, just because they have a full dive backline comp. Yeah. Uh, X team does so I don't understand why they would pick Morales when she has to stay in the back line and they already have a full back line is it entirely uh, to be oh. BM like <laughs> I I'm I don't know yeah uh, it's anyway, like yeah I don't know if it's good here I personally don't think it is right, just right. because the, they later on in the game they don't go stim drone mm -hmm. and they go the uh, drop ship, drop ship. so yeah. they have Felstad. It's he's already there for <laughs> he's already, Soak. He's already, he's already a drop there ship. For Soak. It's like I don't I don't know what compelled them to pick the Morales. It, uh, you know, I mean, the thing is, the Muradin and the Tyrael are going to be very far from her from her heels, but she is going to be able to keep the back line. I mean, she, if she just hangs out with the mages, Slightly. you know, like she can heal one of them, you know. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, I do have some highlights. I made some highlight clips yeah. of this game, so we can see how it went down. Let me see if I can actually get it to work because I'm bad at video production. Move this over here. Oh, oh computer, please. Oh, it's like not moving. There it goes. One moment. I'll get this on screen, just so we can get a, get a look at uh, how it turned out. You know. Um, so I will remove the overlay so yeah uh and i don't know how to show this to you guys at the same time the technology isn't there as they say um so i'm just going to kind of describe it and you'll see it on stream i don't have a delay on or anything okay all right so yeah um mvp black yeah so i i start i started the clip just after level 10 uh not a lot happened and you can see uh there's actually a really nice starfall here and uh the gust he, he tries to save his team with the gust out of the starfall uh, uh, he tries. I'm sorry. He tries to push his team into the Starfall, which actually worked pretty well. Uh, but the Tyrande, um, Tyrande Greymain on the Immortal, um, just got every Immortal so quickly. Um, and you can see here, there's a huge engage. Uh, Rich on the on the Morales is healing up uh, the Mur Muradin pretty nicely there. I mean, he's tanking like crazy, and then uh, and then you have the Sanctification helping him out. Uh, and uh, again, the star falls are huge, and uh, Gray, it, that's what I noticed in these highlights, is Greymane is not, he's just so helpless, like, he has to eyes in the dark way, and he dies, oh no, he doesn't die there anyways, but it happens a lot, and uh, yeah, uh, and then I wanted to show them killing the core, because we do get a look at the manor medevac, so <laughs> everybody likes to see the manor medevac. So you can see they're coming in here, they're just crushing, they're pushing poor guy into the corner, Thrall dies instantly, and... Yeah, they burn down the core. And then there goes the medevac. He saves the Falstad with the medevac just to be a jerk and then flies like three inches away. So good on them. I like that. I'm proud of them for that. So so here, uh, why go medevac? Is there any purpose here? Why go medevac? Uh, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like a safety insurance thing with if they if they dive you, you could just medevac and then Morales will be fine, and Morales is going to be your target. Is for... that more beneficial than than trying to burn down an That's immortal stim with Stim or something? Uh, Especially when they have a Tronda with Hunter's Mark? Yeah, it's also a little bit weird that they did take Medivac. Uh, would it be better to get Stim Drone? In this case, I don't think so. Oh, okay, yeah. Just, just because uh, if they do dive you... And Morales isn't CC locked, then she can cleanse. She can uh, throw her little bomb to CC. She can put everyone in the medevac and say, "We're out. <laughs> We're gone. You blew a lot of alts. You blew a lot of 
stun combos. You blew basically everything. We're out. We're we're taking another team fight. We're doing it later. Right. So this is a lot of utility there, and obviously the uh, Falstad's probably going to go mage build. So you're not going to get a huge amount of value out of out of stim pack like you would with like say an Illidan or a Grey Mage yeah. or something. Exactly. Okay. Is, Interesting. Is the is the medevac in in response to the dive comp? Then is that is that what the insurance yes. policy is here for? Yes. It's it's in response to that. Also, with stim drone, it not the best targets for really anyone. Felsa would have to go giant killer on thirteen for it to make it semi useful. But if you're going mage build, then the uh, the cooldown is just way better. Okay. Gotcha. So that was the first game there, and yeah, MVP uh, Black kind of wiped the floor with X Team in that match, uh, two zero. That was the second game we just saw. Um, so getting back to Astral Authority, um, uh, you know, you guys obviously watch a lot of these matches, and because you're participating in them and stuff. Yep. Uh, what? How would you describe uh, Astral Authority's um, style? Uh, are you an aggressive team? Are you do you try to uh, uh, like what 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 differentiates you from other teams? Okay, uh, for us, we kind of play it like the smart way, kind of, I guess you could say. We, we, we say, they're on boss, we know that they have blank, blank, and blank down. Can we fight? Do What do we have that we can destroy mm -hmm. them with? If we say, we have this, they don't have that, we, we can say, alright, let's try to engage it. Let's, let's play it out, play it smart, and if we see one person out of position, we can, we can snap on them. But otherwise, if it looks like we're fighting, we're just saying, okay, back off, back off. And then if one person starts to, like, straggle behind, and it's like a half health, maybe less than half health, like, yeah. Murden or something like that, and he has no alt, no stone form, we're just like, okay, we're, <laughs> we're out. You're, 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 you're dead. We're, right. we're ditching you. Okay. Yeah, I, I've noticed a lot, like, especially with Korean teams, it seems to be... It seems yeah. to be the, the, the heavy emphasis, obviously they're great at, at strategy and all that, and outsmarting their opponents, but it seems like the emphasis on them is in execution, in in-game mechanics. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, European and native uh, uh, North American teams tend to... Uh, I've been, I, I work at a rug store, <laughs> I say Native American all day, don't start with me. Uh, North American teams, um, they tend to be a little bit more about the overall strategy, um, and, and not that their execution is is bad, but it seems it, it seems like maybe you guys emphasize on the uh, kind of the uh, overarching strategy of the game more than like running drills for yeah. mechanics. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, currently as of now, Korea is like probably the best in just straight up mechanic wise, yes. and all they say is fight, fight, fight every day. Right. They're very aggressive. Like, yeah. Yeah, and that's all they really do. And mm -hmm. basically, at that point, it's just really who can press the keys better on their keyboard. Right, which is and, great. It's perfect for them because they yeah. they can, you know. So yeah, and of course you want to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's perfect. But yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay, um, I guess uh, unless we have you have anything for Astro before we go to the second game, Ryan? Uh, no, let's go. All right, let's go. So the second game you chose, it's like a game show. Yeah. Uh, second game you chose was My Insanity versus Please Buff Arthas. So this was an interesting game. I, I watched this earlier today. So uh, they are on Battlefield of Eternity once again, yeah. uh, which is you know that's cool. I like I like that we can look at two different games on the same map. Um, and uh, the first band coming out of My Insanity is Greymane. Yep. And I, I think we've gone over what why you would want to do that. So it's really good. He just yeah. Yeah. destroys the immortal. He has a great. He's a great hero. Okay. All right. So who's your ban if you're pleased buff Arthas? If I'm pleased buff Arthas, Illidan. It's sure again. <laughs> it's insane. S same reasons. Yeah. Okay. And they do indeed do that. So now that the the bands these these are a much more traditional bands on this map. Um, that leaves the KT open. Do you snatch up the KT right here, right now, if you're my insanity? Uh, see, it's not that bad. Right. I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind it, but at the same time, I think KT's in like a all right position now. Mm -hmm. I feel like people have just played against him and played. He's got with a reputation, right? So yeah. oh yeah, they yeah. played with him <laughs> for so often that yeah. now he's starting to get like. Oh, now you have KT. I guess we'll just do this and this and this, and right. then I guess we'll start winning the game. 
right? He, he's figured out. He's he's yeah. downloaded. Okay. Mm-hmm. So who's your dream first pick here? Uh, now that you you're you're first picking here, you're like, well, we can have everyone anyone we want other than these two dudes. Who's it gonna be? It it wouldn't be bad for Tyrande. Tyrande's a good pick. Uh, I know that they like Thrall, so Thrall's another good pick for them. It's they, they they got they got some good solid picks that they could pick on battlefield. Okay, let's see who they go with. Uh, they do first pick the Muradin once again. We see a very early Muradin. Um, so apparently somebody is <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. They're thinking uh, thinking Muradin is just too high priority. And this is something I actually wanted to ask you about. Muradin still a very very high value uh, tank in the pro scene. Uh, dropped off a lot in win rate since his avatar was uh, nerfed. Um, what 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 do you think that is? Why is he losing so much more in normal games, but still so good in the uh, on the highest level of play? Uh, I don't actually know. Yeah, I guess I guess it just too. basically yeah. comes down to can you land a stun and yeah. knowing when you can jump in and if you can get out. Like if you're at half health, oh yeah, I could jump in. I have stone form. I have ultimate i'm i'll be fine right uh <laughs> instead of just jumping in getting insta bursted and then saying oh i had this stuff i could have <laughs> i could have done something else yeah totally okay so yeah another interesting first pick for my insanity the european team there with the murd in first pick uh you don't see that often but you might see it more uh in the near future uh we do have some big games coming up this week so keep an eye out for that uh, so you see the Muradin pick, you're like, all right, uh, you're please buff Arthas. Uh, who are you gonna pick up now? Uh, they left a lot of things open, but Thrall again is a really sure. good big Thrall's pick still up there. here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thrall Rhaegar. It's basically just Thrall Rhaegar, yeah. yeah. Like okay. you kind of want to deny them the sure. Rhaegar pick again. All right, so there's the Thrall Felstad actually. So yeah. half of it there. Uh, and I, I would agree. I, I, I love the security of the best healer in the game being on my team, you know. So, but I am not on a pro team like Ryan is so so quick to point out <laughs> constantly. Uh, I, I play with you on a team. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was, we're doing some team league tonight, right? Yeah, sure. Right. Okay. Same. Good. 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 Uh, oh wait, same. Never mind. We're not queuing. We're not queuing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. All right, so yeah, Falstad Thrall. Again, with the Falstad and Murd and very early uh, picks on this map. Um, and I think we talked about it before, Falstad provides a lot. So yeah, let's just see what uh, what Mind Sandy picks up now. Um, they do go for the Toronto Rhaegar, so there you go, just power picks on this map, right? Mm-hmm. Toronto, once again, going good with Murd and Mirande combo. That's perfect for them. Mm-hmm. And then Rhaegar being best healer, right. so also denying them the... Uh, Rhaegar now that they have Thrall. Mm-hmm. So pretty straightforward draft so far, other than the uh, Rhaegar coming a little yep. late. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Very now, good picks and picks by my insanity so far. Yeah, oh for sure. Um, so it's PBA's ban. They have a healer covered, they have a tank. At this point, who are you banning? KT. <laughs> KT, sure. All right. Like, I do not so, want more stuns on my face. Well, there it is, yeah, for sure. So, they had the same thought. Uh, they don't want that gravity lapse with the Muradin and the and the Lunar Flare. That's just really hard to deal with. So, there's that. Okay, so, you're pretty comfortable with your draft right now is my insanity. What kind of bans should they uh, be looking at? They can really ban, at this point... Gaslow? Whatever they want. Yeah, they can <laughs> ban Gaslow. Like, there's really... Not much that uh, Please Buff Arthas can get well, that'll does, make doesn't... them say, wow, we should have banned that. Right. Does an ETC ban here make sense, considering, again, it, it forces them down another tier level um, yeah. the warrior comp here? Yeah, that's basically what they say. They're, they're like, okay, they don't really have that much against us. They can't do anything. Well, let's just ban the most broken right. thing I guess you could say against them and they just ban ETC and yeah, then so there's the it does, doesn't really leave that good of a tank left right. open for them so that that actually leads me to a question I, I, I always ask on here and, and also check out the big brain on Lord of Ascension Ryan Tower he's a prophet <laughs> he knew yeah. they didn't have a tank what a genius uh, <laughs> so 
how much should you be thinking about drafting your comp versus countering your enemy's comp? How do you, how do you play that? If you're PBA? Yeah, just in general. Like, um, do you just go as hard as you can for the comps you know best, or do you look at their theirs and try to uh, try to uh, deny them as much as possible the comp they're trying to build? Uh, it kind of goes like both, but mm -hmm. mostly the comp that they're trying to build. But mm -hmm. I feel like in this specific draft, it's a little bit late. They have right, the CC right. lock. Mm -hmm. They have everything to stop Thrall and Felstad. Thrall not being the most mobile, and Felstad, if he gets one stun, he'll get stunned again right. and again and again. Again and again. Okay. Let me ask another question right here. Where, so clearly, you know, PBA doesn't have a tank, and they don't have a healer yet. Yeah. My uh, Insanity gets to choose one to ban out here, and they obviously went with the tank. What, what's the thought process versus trying to knock them down a tier level on the tank versus the healer? Is that in relation to this is the top I have, so I don't want them to have an ETC? Or is it looking at PBA's top and being like, I don't want them to have that tank? Like, where's the decision process there between the healer and the tank? From the so, band? right now in healer, it's like I said, Rhaegar being the best. And then after that, it's either Brightwing or Monk. And. That's really it. Like both both of them are good, but they just do not step to Rhaegar. It's just a whole other level. Also with uh, with Brightwing, you can't pick Brightwing here. Brightwing can't go. Well, he can go cleanse, but you're down a big shield. Right. Uh, Brightwing is not a good pick. Uh, with Monk, Monk is a good pick for them, but it can easily get stunned out. It can continue to just hurt them right so because they have so much burst monk can't monk doesn't really heal as much burst as they have currently so i guess what you're saying is they're basically thinking well you we've already beaten you in the healer department like mm -hmm. you're not going to beat yes. us in that department now so we might as well knock you down on something that's a little closer mm -hmm. okay exactly gotcha. that's why etc and murden are the best two tanks and then it's like a slight fall off and then it's like Arthas, really. Right, but the healer, not there's that, that not, one not king that many of the there. hill. Right, okay. Interesting. Alright, so coming out next for uh, please buff Arthas is Tyrael Kerazine. So another Tyrael game on Battlefield of Eternity. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is very different comp, though, uh, other than the Falstad. Uh, mm -hmm. So why do you think uh, PBA took Tyrael here? Tyrael's not bad here. Mm -hmm. Tyrael's actually pretty good. Because uh, it denies them if they start to engage and it's a slight bit of a choke thrall thrall and uh Felstad can stand on the sanctification it's pretty good to mm -hmm. uh right live basically the melee yeah. and yeah and it's just slightly different because now that they have cc uh or even the burst mirande combo yeah it's 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 slightly different with sanctification because now sanctification actually does something. You have a it window actually, now. Yes, and it, it actually does something here. It's not mm -hmm. saying one person's instantly gonna die, right? And now yeah. we're gonna live through sanctification. If they burst us through that, hopefully they won't because we're gonna try to kill someone. Yeah. So one that's, way, one one great way to stop all the crazy chain stuns is to make your whole team invincible, right? That's the kind yeah. of thought there. Yep. Right, yeah, it gives you a window to maybe sneak a kill in during a team fight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If they get if they get something with sanctification, they're in a pretty good spot. Right. So, uh, Asian teams seem very comfortable with Terial. They have for over a year now. They love Terial. They all play Terial. Um, China, Korea, Taiwan, all those guys. You don't see him picked in the North American scene. What do you think the difference is in the in the play style, the the just the way they train? Uh, what what is it about Terriel that he's such a mainstay over there? Uh, I think currently for NA, mm -hmm. I think with Terriel we we prioritize him as if you have Terriel, we're a dive comp. You you have to pick Greymane. You have to pick anyone that dives. Thrall even is not that bad with Tyrael, but I think with NA we have the mindset of we need to go in and then sanctification instead of let them come to us, we'll sanctification when the time's okay. right. I, got you. I think that's what China's doing a little bit differently. Okay, interesting. 
So yeah, I had always wondered about that, and I was not able to have formulate any theories. So you've got your kind of a you you got your top tier picks over here on my insanity. You're feeling pretty comfortable. You banned mm-hmm. out etc. How do you fill out this comp now? They can pick really a lot of stuff. They can mm-hmm. pick a really good auto attacker. They can pick more bursts. They can pick basically any two assassins. They could even go double tank. It wouldn't even be that bad. Right. So against this Tyrael and the Sanctification and the uh, Divine Palm, Sunder, and all that, would you want your damage to be more uh, ranged burst? Do you want a melee hero like Sonya against a comp like this? What kind of things work yes. poorly in this Yes, Sonya, Sonya will be a really good pickup, especially if she went leap. Like, mm-hmm. that's even adding on to the combo. Plus, it'd be awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and then, also with range, you, you also would want a range. Uh, okay. You can't have two melee in this. It doesn't make sense, really. Right. Because you'll, you'll just stand on the sanctification while they hit you. Right. But with, with also the, uh, the range, I feel like it has to be kind of like a mobile hero. Because okay. if Falstad gets on you, then... You're gonna get a little bit screwed if you're like a Vala or something like that. Yeah. Who are who are some of the most uh, mobile damage dealers? Mobile damage dealers: uh, Sylvanas, mm-hmm. Li Ming. Uh, that's basically it. They already have Falstad. Okay. So they do get the Li Ming and then uh, finish it out with the Lunara. Uh, so they go double range. They just basically they're like to me this says like we got our dream first three picks. That we're is. very safe and now we're just gonna blow you up as hard as we can like. With those last that's, two picks. Yeah. That's the dream right there. Yeah. That is the <laughs> dream Lee Ming comp. Yeah. She, I mean, she's going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's she's got nothing to worry about. dream right there. Yeah. Also, just with that, they burn the Immortal way faster. Right, right. Just because of those two picks. So really good draft by them there. Yeah. That's, that is... The, the reason why I picked it is because that is the draft. That is the, that is the bread and butter. That's... Yeah. Insane. That, that draft that made you all, all made you all tingly when you saw. Yeah, it. as soon yeah. as they have everything like that, I actually question. I'm like, how did they get all of that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it may have been an issue of just not not knowing how it NA drafts so well, or just not being able to, to uh, anticipate it. But they do round out with a Vala. Um, do you think that was just kind of a last ditch thing where they're like, I don't know what other damage to do, or do you I, think it's it's a good pick? I feel like. They said, how do we counter Lunara? Oh, let's just go Vala and then Reign of Vengeance. Try and stun her out. Try to basically just kill the Lunara. Vala technically wins the auto attack fight, but Lunara can just kite back, run away, let her poison sink in, and then just come back and say, hey, you're half health, I'm going to keep autoing you. Right, okay. Is there any, any dimension, any world where Judgment... Would be okay in this te- in this game, or would that be judgment? That's. <laughs> I'm big... just saying, if they want to stun the Lunara, if they, I mean, <laughs> uh, Sunder. right now, right now, judgment just it just doesn't have a place just, currently. Uh, yeah. it, it like it's too easily countered by cleanse. It's so interesting too because like sanctification used to be the ult everyone laughed at, right? Like yeah. it was like, oh, that's a silly ult. Don't take that ult. Judgment's the best alt in the game. And then, like, not that much changed, but the meta changed in such a way that now it's just a no-brainer for Tyrael. That's what fascinates me the most about about drafting in the meta. Um, Yeah, so there's... uh, So, how do you think... If you were just checking out this draft, you turned into the Twitch stream, and you just saw this draft, how how would you predict the story of the game would go, just looking at this? Like, what Uh, sort of things would happen? Without even looking at the map, I say... My insanity already has like the way better draft. They have the they have the engage. They have the disengage. They have the soak potential. They have the gank potential. Mm-hmm. They have basically everything. And then you look at Battlefield of Eternity, and then you look at uh, Please Buff Arthas, and you say, "Oh, they also won boss Immortal too." Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you just like that. You like this comp a lot for My That's, Insanity, and My Insanity is a great team. That. I'm very impressed by them every time I see them play. So I got a little highlight video here just so people can see how the game turned out um we're going to start at level three uh the first immortal battle and uh the 
comp for my insanity, bullying around um, the Murden in there, and uh, Falstad died so quickly there. Like I, I, I watched that clip like three yeah. times, and I'm not sure what killed him. Like he died so fast, <laughs> like it was crazy. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how it went with every immortal. This is this is the second immortal here, and with this second immortal, because because PBA is not, don't even have their ults yet, you can see they take the keep on the second immortal. <laughs> at, at eight minutes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, this is just a stomp, you know. Um, yeah. And there's a uh, Hasu Abs on the Li Ming. Uh, love Hasu Abs because he's a former StarCraft pro. That's my that's my jam. Um, yeah, and that's just the, the way this game went. Um, I, they were trying to do what they could during the Immortal phase, and there was just nothing going on for them. They just couldn't get anything to. And they did a really good job of just annihilating that Falstad every time with the chain yep. stuns. So yeah, and uh, even the tier like the Tyrael can't handle just the just the residual damage, you know, like he's he's getting melted down, mm -hmm. uh, and the stuns, and yeah, this was the third immortal. Uh, Thirteen and a half minutes in, uh, they wipe their team here and uh, end up uh, taking the core without the immortal. Even though that was a nice seven sided strike, did a pretty good amount of damage. Uh, yeah, the immortal is gonna uh, just break that down, and then they're very easily gonna finish off the core. So. Yeah, that's how that game went, and uh, that was a yeah a very good example of uh, of just a team being outdrafted, which is something I think is important to look at because I often feel outdrafted, and it's hard to understand sometimes how the hell did that happen? How did I just get outdrafted so badly? Like, um, and what kind of comps accomplished that? Yeah, Ryan, what do you think of that game? Exactly. I mean, it was, it was pretty brutal. I, it looked a lot like us in team lead. Yeah, um, yeah, it does. clearly. Yeah, because yeah. we get outdrafted every. Yeah, you guys are my insanity, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what Absolutely. he meant. Absolutely, that's nice. what he meant. Nice. Yeah, we're just pros. Uh, like we we know what we're doing. I, I just just going back to the to the draft a little bit, and kind of going back to what something Danny asked earlier about the the draft going toward you know either trying to pick up your team that you wanted to play with your plan versus counter picking. It kind of looks like they both went for just getting their draft, and MIM Insanity just got the one they wanted, which was just better. Yeah. Um, was there anywhere in there in the, any particular picks um, that you felt were actual counter picks? I mean, uh, I'm always really interested watching on stream, trying to think about, all right, well, how much of this is them getting what they want versus them getting what they need to, to, to fight against the, the team that's, that's coming in? So, with... PBA, I think they ban out the correct things, but they didn't really pick up the strongest heroes. They didn't really play the map, really. Mm -hmm. They they said, we could try for this comp, and we could try to defend. We could we, we defend really well. We could have Felstead Soak, and then if they are low, because they have a Tyrande, they might pick a, a worse healer then we might be able to engage once they are uh, a little bit lower but it just didn't it just didn't go their way because right. they just got fully engaged on they didn't have time to defend they were just fully getting picked and just dead half the time right absolutely so, so, so oh go ahead oh okay so what when i looked at this draft where from my club point of view it all fell apart for pba when they let yeah. Um, MIM Insanity picked up the Tyrande radar, and then they were just free to pick up whatever damage they wanted after that. Um, mm -hmm. is, is that where you think it turned? I mean, you looking at it from, from your experience, where did it really just fall apart? That's also kind of where it goes, right there. Uh, also with the the Kerazim Tyrael pick. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand Kerazim, but they're not really going to pick it. They 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 have Tyrande, they have Rhaegar. Right. right. Uh you, there's really no reason to pick up Kerosene this early. Why not try to deny a a, a good assassin right. at there's this point? There's no reason that Li Ming couldn't have been on their team. Yeah. Li Ming definitely could have been picked up. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, uh what was I going to ask? Oh, um so we've gone over heroes that are really good on Battlefield of Eternity and I got to remember to turn off Twitch alerts. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but your top three heroes on Battlefield of Eternity, just so people have a have a quick list in their heads. On Battlefield, for me, I think it'd be Greymane, then Li Ming, and then Tyrande. Okay, okay, good, yeah.
cool, man. Well, that was those were those were two very good drafts. Uh, I feel like every time I host this show, I get a little bit better, and I learn a lot. So I hope that works for everyone watching too. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So let's do some shout outs real quick. Ryan, tell them about yourself. Tell them tell them where to go when they want more of that that sweet Lord of Ascension action. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter at Lord of Ascension. Um, otherwise, you can check out the two sites I run with Danny, SC Legacy, StarCraft Legacy, been around since 1998, and uh, StormLegacy.com, which is our more recent venture all about heroes. And hopefully we learn something along the way and get better at playing the game. Yep, that's the plan. Um, I am Sahara Drac. I cast StarCraft for a long time. Uh, I am a heroes dude now. I help admin Storm Legacy. Uh, if anybody watching wants to uh, contribute content, we're always looking for writers, content creators, video makers, all of that. So hit me up at Sahara Drac or at Storm Legacy Team on Twitter. We also have the YouTube, the YouTubes for the videos, um, and that's also at Storm Legacy. Trees, shout Hi. out. Who do you want? Hi. Hi. I I play uh, I play video games. Yes, for, you do. For Astral Authority, and uh, yeah. <laughs> That's me. I mean, this is your chance right now. You have the stage oh, okay. to call Shout out, out somebody on your team. Shout out. I mean, so- someone on my team. Pick, or pick a favorite, you know, talk some trash, you know. Okay. I mean, this is an opportunity. All right. Equinox, <laughs> this is how you draft a Lee Ming comp. Please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, so, so is Equinox is the captain, right? Yeah. So he's kind of the, the, the guy who drafts. Obviously, yeah, it's not all him, but... Yeah. Drafter and shot caller. Sure, okay. Well, good. Maybe Equinox learned something from this <laughs> draft house tonight. And he can finally get good, right? Like oh, Equinox, goodness. come on the show sometime. Just kidding. Uh, we'd love to have you here. <laughs> all right, man, cool. And uh, that's his Twitter there, at Astral Trees. Uh, Astral Authority, an awesome team. Really cool people, both on the team and in the management side of things. I talked to a lot of them in Austin and at Hairs of the Dorm, actually. And, uh, yeah, just a cool team. Check them out. Um, when can we hope to see you guys uh, playing next? Is it going to be the next regionals? It's, yeah, it's going to be the next uh, regionals, definitely. I think okay. it's in Montreal. Okay, cool. So Well, we're going to be looking time. forward to that, and, and good luck to you guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, this video will be in VOD form on our YouTube within 24 hours if you missed anything or want to re- go over some draft stuff. It'll also be available on this Twitch channel. So uh, I think uh, I think that's a wrap on the old Nexus draft house. Oh, by the way, funny story, Lord of Ascension. So you know how it's called draft house, and we were like, maybe we should drink a beer or something, you know? Like, <laughs> we each drink a beer. It's the draft house. That's the theme. I was all, hey, Trees, uh, you know, do you, do you drink beer or anything? He's all, I'm 19. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I am so old that i'm so old it didn't even occur to me that someone could be 19 like <laughs> yes thank you for making me feel old along with you <laughs> yeah no problem that's that's the emphasis all right guys good all show right. thank you so much and uh we're gonna i'll be i'm gonna restart the stream in a few minutes we're gonna be playing some hero league slash team league so stick around check that out if you'd like